hello everyone in this uh, video I'm going to es explain about evolutionary games evolutionary games are an important branch of game theory so uh, let's uh, relook at uh, the regular game theory in regular game theory the individual players make decisions the payoffs depend on decision made by everyone and uh, the reasoning about what other players might do happen simultaneously now if we take evolutionary game the game theory continues to apply even if no individual is overtly reasoning or making explicit decisions so the key difference between a regular game and an evolutionary game is in a regular game as a player i am making a decision by looking at the environment by looking at the possible strategies by other players everything but in case of an evolutionary game the fact that it is me decides my strategy uh, so that in other words my gene determines my strategy i am not making any explicit decision so the decision may not be conscious so given my gene decides my decision or my strategy in a situation what will persist in a population of different uh, genes that is essentially what is uh, analyzed through evolutionary games the background is primarily from biology so the evolutionary biology an idea that an organism's gene largely determine its observable characteristics which is also called as fitness in a given environment so the organisms which are more fit will produce more offspring and uh, that essentially means those uh, players or those organisms which has greater fitness will represent will have a larger representation of them in the population uh, which essentially means it's a natural selection overview of evolutionary evolutional game its uh, evolutionary game theory has been developed as a mathematical framework to study the interaction among rational biological agents in a population so agents evolves or adapts in a given condition to choose a strategy the the uh, the chosen strategy based on fitness the fitness here is analogous to payoffs so let's take a very classical example of an evolutionary game an interaction between a hawk and a dove for food so the hawks are generally known to be aggressive whereas the doves are known to be mild so which also indicates that if a hawk and a dove interact each other potentially dove will give up for the food and the hawk will get all of them on the other hand if two hawks see interact each other for a food probably they will fight hurt each other at a cost and then finally they will share the food whereas if it is two doves they naturally will simply go start sharing the food without even a fight so evolutionary game theory has the following advantages over the typical non cooperative game theory the solution of an evolutionary game also known as evolutionary stable strategy ess or evolutionary equilibrium can serve as a refinement to nash equilibrium so which essentially means nash equilibrium is not necessarily sufficient efficient there could be multiple nash equilibria there could be no nash equilibria now evolutionary stable strategy can help solve such situations to probably get a refined outcome which is known as evolutionary equilibrium and uh, strong rationality is assumption is not required in evolutionary game which has actually been a strong condition for a typical non cooperative game and evolutionary game is based on evolutionary process which is dynamic in nature which can model and capture the adaptation of agents to change their strategies and each reach equilibrium over a time 
the process of evolution has two important mechanisms one is mutation and the other one is selection the mutation is a mechanism of modifying the characteristics of an agent for example i may change by injecting the dow i may change the character of dow to start behaving like a hawk the selection the selection is a mechanism that is applied after mutation to retain agents with higher fitness while eliminating agents with lower fitness so which essentially shows who is surviving so the evolutionary game mutation is described by evolutionary stable strategy and selection mechanism is dis, uh, explained described by replicator dynamics so what is an evolutionary stable strategy essentially this is based on the key concept the extension of the core concept of nash equilibrium we know that in nash equilibrium no player has an intense incentive to deviate from its current equilibrium strategy without uh, unilaterally uh they will end up getting a uh no they will not get a better payoff by a unilateral deviation similarly evolutionary stable means if a strategy s is evolutionary stable when there are a small fraction epsilon of s prime population in the whole population where the remaining 1 minus epsilon is still s the utility of s is greater than utility of s prime in such situation that means s is evolutionary stable so even with the even with the uh, mutation s is still giving a better utility than the mutated strategy s prime that is when we call s as evolutionary stable the mutation is not succeeding so the key insight of game theory is main be many behaviors involve the interaction of multiple organisms in a population the success of an organism depends on how its behavior interact with that of others that that essentially means i can't measure fitness of an individual organism fitness must be evaluated in the context of full of population and how evolutionary game is analogous to typical non cooperative games the organisms genetically determine character and behavior is nothing but the strategy in a non cooperative game the fitness of a evolutionary game is nothing but the payoff in a non cooperative game and payoff depends on strategies of organisms with which it interacts which is nothing but the game matrix that we represent in a simultaneous game in non cooperative games a motivating example let's look at a species of beetle each beetle's fitness depends on finding and processing food effectively now we will introduce mutation beetles with mutation have larger body size so they need more food what do you think will happen large beetles need more food this makes them less fit for the environment the mutation will thus die over a time but it doesn't stop here beetles compete each other for food large beetles are more effective at claiming above average share of the food so whenever a large beetle interact with a small beetle the large beetle is going to get uh, more food and uh, assume food competition is among pairs and uh, same sized beetles get equal share of food large beetle gets majority of the food from small beetle then large beetle no matter how much they get they do not uh, show good fitness from the given quantity of food they still need more because of their expensive metabolism so let's formulate this as a game if you see here the small and small when they interact they equally share the food when the large and large interact they also equally share but probably there is a fight happened or something so their uh, share is actually less and when a small and a large interact large get majority of the food compared to small but you see here 
if i am player 1 i am either small or large i can't choose to be small or large it is determined by by my body nature or by the mutation so now beetle is asking itself do i want to be small or large so we have to essentially look at this as random there are uh, some maybe some 1000 uh, beetles and some 900 or 950 of them are small and 50 of them are large now they are you randomly choose any two and then let them interact whenever a small and small interact they share the food they are happy whenever a small and a large interact the small is almost going to die because it gets very less food so over a time we can actually see that what will happen is the large will survive okay so the concept of nash equilibrium doesn't work in evolutionary stable strategy because nobody is changing their personal strategy and uh, what we have is evolutionary stable strategy which is a genetically determined strategy that depends that tends to persist once it is prevalent in a population so let's now go back to our beetles example suppose each beetle is repeatedly pairing off with other beetles so and assume no repeated interaction because there is a huge population so beetle's fitness is nothing but the average fitness from food interactions more food means more offspring more new generation beetles will come in the definition is a definition here is a strategy is evolutionary stable if everyone uses it and any small group of invaders with a different strategy will die off in multiple interactions so the fitness of the organism in the population is expected payoff from interaction with another member of population strategy t invades a strategy s at level x if x fraction of population uses t 1 minus x fraction of population uses s strategy s is evolutionary stable if there is a small number y such that when any other strategy t invades s at any level x less than y the fitness of an organism playing x s is strictly greater than the fitness of an organism playing t so is small an evolutionary stable strategy suppose for some small number x 1 minus fraction is small and x is large what is expected payoff 1 minus x with a probability 1 minus x a small will meet another small so it is of payoff 5 with the probability x it will meet a large beetle of payoff 1 so the expected payoff is nothing but 5 times 1 minus x plus 1x which is 5 minus 4x suppose for some small number x a 1 minus x fraction of population is a small and x is large what is the expected payoff of large beetle in a random interaction with a probability 1 minus x it meets a small beetle 8 with probability x it meets a large beetle of payoff 3 so expected payoff will be calculated as 8 times 1 minus x plus 3x which is 8 minus 5x now you see here expected fitness of large beetle is 8 minus 5x expected fitness of small beetle is 5 minus 4x for when x is small we already said x is small fitness of large beetle exceeds fitness of small in this example even for bigger x it is true so we can easily see that for a small fraction of invaders the large beetles the small cannot survive because large will have a better fitness what about large assume x fraction are small and rest are large then expected payoff of large is the x will i mean similar to how we calculated in the previous step we can calculate and we get it as 3 times 1 minus x plus 8x 3 plus 5x and expected payoff to small similarly is 1 plus 4x so you can see that for any value of x small or large the expected payoff to large is better than expected payoff to small so large is evolutionary stable which essentially means when there are a huge number of large beetles you just have some small beetles induced the small will die over immediately because they are going to give up all their food in the fight for survival
summary a few large beetles introduced into a population consisting of small beetles large beetles will do really well they rarely meet each other they get most of the food in most competitions population of small beetles cannot drive out the large ones so small is not evolutionary stable conversely a few small beetles will do very badly they will lose almost every competition for food so a population of large beetles resist the invasion of small beetle so large is evolutionary stable another example virus populations can play evolutionary version of prisoner's dilemma now this is the season of corona virus covid 19 so let's take an example of a virus in a game virus a infects bacteria manufactures products required for replication virus b mutated version of a can replicate inside bacteria but less efficiently but the fact that a is there will benefit b a lot he is b evolutionary stable what do you think let's pause for a second okay so look at the interaction between the two viruses when a and a interact they have some pi of 1 when a and b interact the presence of a hugely benefits b b gets a huge pi of 1.99 which is almost double compared to a now when b and b interact the fact that a is not present gives a bad effect on b so b gets less than whatever they get when a is present so viruses in pure a population is better than viruses in pure b but regardless of what viruses do higher pi of to be b thus b is evolutionary stable even though a would have been better so under what conditions is a strategy evolutionary stable we need to really figure it out from the pay of matrix so assume you have a matrix of the form s t and a a b c c b and d d we can essentially look at the conditions for evolutionary stability in terms of the variables a b c d you can refer to the previous examples of beetles and the virus to correlate and essentially see some relationships suppose there is a small number of x 1 minus x uh, fraction of population uses s and x fraction of population uses t what is the payoff for playing s in a random interaction so meeting another s with a probability 1 minus x is payoff a and meeting t with a probability x is payoff b so expected payoff is a to a times 1 minus x plus bx similarly for playing t we will get c times 1 minus x plus dx therefore s is evolutionary stable if the fact that i am s gives me a better payoff than t so a times 1 minus x plus bx should be greater than c times 1 minus x plus dx now when x is really small let's approximate it to zero we can uh, see that a greater than c is a condition when a equal to c what will happen when b is greater than d this is still true correct so in other words the evolutionary stable strategy happens when a greater than c or a equal to c and b greater than d so there are two possibilities let's take our intuition in order for s to be evolutionary stable using s against x must be at least as good as using t against s otherwise an inverter t will have a higher fitness correct and if s and t are equally good then s is evolutionary stable if the player who play s will do better against t than what those who play t to do with each other this is the intuitive explanation of the previous equations or inequalities conditions now let's look at a symmetric nash equilibrium nash game when is ss in equilibrium in this example which is typically s is greater than or equal to a is greater than or equal to c if a is greater than c 
A is chosen. Correct? You compare this with evolutionary stable strategy. We have we can see there is a huge relationship. Over here, the additional constraint in evolutionary stable strategy is the fact that when A is equal to C, B should also be greater than B. So we can conclude that if a strategy S is evolutionary stable, then S comma S is Nash equilibrium. Does the other direction hold good? Actually, not true if you are able to construct an example of this type, which is A equal to C and B less than D. So let's take an example, stack hunt. If hunter works together, they can catch a stack, so 4 comma 4. On their own, they can catch a hair, 0 comma 3 and 3 comma 0. If one hunter tries for a stack, he gets nothing. If one of them is simply high, uh, trying for a stack, he gets 0 0 here. And uh, on their own, they are still getting a hair, 3 comma 3. So there are two equilibria. If you to a pure Nash equilibrium, 4 comma 4 and 3 comma 3, but riskier to hunt a stack because the other player may not help you. Uh, so you have to really trust the other person to get the best outcome. Let's modify the game a bit such that we want A equal to C and B less than D. So you can see here I just modified a number 0 comma 4 and 4 comma 0. So maybe the fact that I am able to hunt something whereas the other player did not even find something makes me little more happy. So it's equivalent to the happiness of hunting a stack. See it's so easy to develop a counter example. So that means the relation the uh, reverse is not true. So essentially if you look at the strict Nash equilibrium a strict Nash equilibrium happens only when A greater than C. So if A S comma S is strict Nash equilibrium then strategy S is evolutionary stable. Only when they are not strict where the equal to condition comes we have the problem where we cannot say it so confidently. So to summarize Nash equilibrium means rational players choosing mutually best responses to each other's strategy. Great demands on the ability to choose optimally and coordinate on strategies that are best response to each other. Evolutionary stable strategy means no intelligence, no coordination. The strategies are actually determined by the gene. They are hardwired into players. Successful strategies happen to produce more spring. They are almost similar, isn't it? Can you pause a minute and then try to formulate uh, this as a in the matrix form? Okay, so there are four cases. Let's take the easier ones. When a dove and a dove interact each other, they share the resources equally. V by 2, comma V by 2, which is essentially this matrix, this cell. When a hawk and a dove interact each other, the hawk will get all food and dove gets nothing. V, comma 0, 0, comma V. Now, when a hawk and hawk interacts, they fight each other, they get injured, the cost of injury is C. So V minus C and that is shared among both of them. So divided by 2. So this is how the payoff matrix looks like. Let's take an illustration. Let's uh, have an illustration. So let psi of S1 comma S2 denote the change in fitness for an agent adopting strategy S1 against an op uh, opponent strategy S2. Let F s denote the total fitness of an agent adopting strategy S. Yes. Let F0 in, uh, be the in initial fitness and S denotes evolutionary stable strategy and S prime denotes the mutant strategy. So F s is F0 plus a small fraction of players with the phi of S comma S prime and remaining all of them 1 minus epsilon phi of S comma S. Similarly, we can write F S prime where epsilon is a proportion of the population for the mutant strategy S prime. For evolutionary stable strategy, the condition is nothing but f of s should be greater than f of s prime. That means the evolution does not work out. Inverters are not going to survive. So we can again take the similar uh, 
approach as before so this leads to epsilon approach as zero so a small fraction phi of s comma s greater than phi of s prime comma s or if they are equal then phi of s comma s prime greater than phi of s prime comma s so for hoch dow game the dow is not evolutionary stable strategy since a pure population of dows can be invaded by a hawk mutant the moment a hawk is there the hawks whenever they meet a dow the dow is going to lose all its food and the hawks will survive in all the game so over a time the hawk will survive so as long as the resource v is larger than the cost hawk will survive and hawk is evolutionary stable strategy otherwise what will happen if the fight leads to death so the cost is higher than getting the food then naturally the dows whenever they interact each other they will end up not survive so we have to be greater than c for the hawk to be a evolutionary stable strategy now here comes the most one of the more very important concepts of uh, evolutionary game so after mutation is selection and selection is formulated using replicator dynamics so the population can be divided into multiple groups each group adopts a different pure strategy replicator dynamics can essentially model evolution of the groups size over time the proportion or fraction of agents using pure strategy s can be denoted by xs of t and let the payoff of an agent using strategy s given the population state x be denoted by u of s comma x so the payoff is u then the average payoff u bar is nothing but sigma of xs u of s comma x the replicator dynamics essentially looks at the dynamics the time derivative of the population and uh, replicator dynamics is essentially need to be analyzed for the stability to understand the evolutionary equilibrium i don't want to go into the details of this part because it needs another uh, full lecture uh, but uh, let me summarize it by saying given that initial point of the dynamics replicator dynamics sufficiently close to evolutionary equilibrium the solution path of replicator dynamics will remain close to equilibrium this is given by lyapunov stability and the other case is given initial point of replicator dynamics is close to evolutionary equilibrium the solution path of replicator dynamics converges to equilibrium which is asymptotic stability so the two main approaches to prove the stability are based on lyapunov function lyapunov function and the eigen value of the corresponding matrix let's take an example of an application of evolutionary game in congestion control network congestion control so the competition among two types of behaviors in wireless nodes to access the channel using a certain protocol can be modeled as an evolutionary game congestion control at the transport layer is to avoid performance degradation so we know the transmission rate can be adjusted based by changing the congestion window size if we follow tcp now the speed of transmission rate to be increased and decreased defines the aggressiveness of the protocol we know tcp protocol congestion control is very famous known as aimd additive increase and multiplicative decrease so to briefly explain when first packet is transmission is successful next time i will increase by 1 2 packets again i will increase by 1 3 assume at the eighth packet i deter i found a loss a condition i will reduce multiplicatively which is essentially divide it into half so maybe eight will become four if no congestion next is five so slowly increase at four if i still find a congestion i will reduce it further by half so this is a typical principle of uh, congestion control amd so and this comes when there are multiple flows share the same link and a competition arises as seen in the picture it's found that aggressive strategy of all flows where the 
AMD values that alpha and beta are very large becomes a Nash equilibrium and uh, performance will degrade significantly due to congestion. Let's take a static game. Analysis of the TCP protocol in a wireless environment is performed in which the evolutionary game model here it is essentially mapping to the hawk and dove game we will see how it is there are two populations of flows with TCP the flow from population i is characterized by parameter alpha i and beta i the increase and decrease rate the strategy is, is of flow is to be aggressive uh, hawk or to be peaceful dove so the parameters are given here alpha h and uh, alpha i beta i where hawk's strategies are aggressive so alpha h greater than or equal to alpha d now the static game so we follow the similar uh, uh, way how we explain replicator dynamics and the payoff so here you can see the utility is uh, throughput minus loss rate where l is loss rate and w is uh, weight for the loss so the throughput we can formulate it as an equation something like this uh, the average throughput and uh, loss rate can be defined as a function of strategies of two populations the throughput of si comma sj and loss of si comma sj and uh, we can consider the loss rate when the loss rate is considered it increases as the flow becomes more aggressive that is larger the values of alpha and uh, alpha i and beta i so when it is aggressive the loss rate increases that means correspondingly utility decreases because loss is a minus function so the game becomes a hawk dove pure model whose solution is evolutionary stable strategy so it's found that the application that is loss sensitive will tend to use a less aggressive strategy so you can exactly see uh, a email communication is always a low sensitive uh, application you don't want the data to be changed in your email so you always go for a less aggressive strategy whereas a video streaming on YouTube they typically follow UDP because some amount of loss is still adjustable because they can still adapt and show you the essence of the video with some less quality examples are some research papers published elsewhere I have just taken them as an example to uh, explain how computer science uses these concepts so this is an example on called NUACH uh, adaptive and stable application deployment adapting based on workload and resource availability and uh, allows application to adapt their locations and resource allocation to workload and resource availability and the stability is how application seeks stable adaptation decisions by minimizing oscillations so the players are different deployment strategies randomly played uh, paired players repeatedly play games each game distinguishes a winning and a losing player with respect to performance objectives the winner replicates itself and increases its share in the population the loser is eliminated from the population this is typically of an evolutionary game model so through multiple games performed repeatedly we can determine which is the best strategy so through theoretical analysis nuance guarantees that the population state converts converges to an equilibrium so let's take a problem this work consists of an application deployment problem where m hosts are available to operate n applications each application is designed and deployed as a set of three server software following the three tier application the web server the app server and the database server so the application architecture each message is sequentially processed from a web server to a database server through an application server performance objectives are response time resource consumption distance the average distance between VMs in an application or the number of hope counts between hosts running on the VMs the load balance so how we design the game is uh, you can look at here as an example there are three hosts we are determining how the virtual machine should be placed so that we can minimize the distance between them the servers are maximum utilized 
so you can see here for example for first application the web server and the app server lies on the same host its db server cannot accommodate there because of the size constraint so it is on a different host now when it came to second application its web server is in one host app server is in one host and db server is in one host so we see that as an example sample allocation here and uh, the nuage follows an algorithm essentially our uh, evolution game algorithm and they shows that the population state of an application population converges to an equilibrium so it's a paper from chono lee et al an evolutionary game theoretic approach to adaptive and stable application deployments in cloud interested readers are requested to go and look at the paper to understand more about it uh, the intention of this presentation is to give a small example uh, high level introduction to how some of the concepts in evolutionary games are used in computer science we have seen one from computer networks and another one from cloud computing there are plenty of other applications some examples are cognitive radio networks the security problem in mobile electronic e-commerce chain trust and reputation in e-commerce systems there are uh, reference papers over here so interested uh, viewers can go and refer the paper and uh, with that uh, let me thank you and uh, this is a picture i have taken from uh, emirates while flying from dubai to san francisco and when it was passing through the north pole very beautiful isn't it thank you bye